Hello and welcome to Book Buzz. My name is Christy and I'm an Adult Services Librarian at the Naperville Boulevard Library. In this program, my colleague Adam and I will share with you some of the most exciting books coming out this fall. This is a multi-part series, so we hope you will check out all the different segments and learn about some different genres. We have created a physical handout that will be available at the Adult Services desks at all three Naperville libraries, so if you are interested, please feel free to pick one up. And now, let's talk about the crime genres. The first book is Moonflower Murders by Anthony Horowitz, out August 18th. It's a new Horowitz mystery, and this one follows the publisher Susan Ryland again from the wonderful Magpie Murders. This one follows Ryland as she hears about a murder that occurred in an inn on the Suffolk coast, the details of which mirror the third book written by the late Alan Conway. And the book contains details that weren't uncovered in the original real life murder. Does the fictional account suggest that the wrong person was convicted of the murder? Should she follow the clues from a book whose author is dead? This is another twisty, mind-bending, and suspenseful mystery that is sure to please fans of thoughtful, different murder mysteries. Next is White Ivy by Susie Yang, out September 8th. This is a debut novel about a young woman's obsession with her privileged classmate and the lengths she'll go to win his love. When Ivy is a young immigrant teenager in the US, she works with her grandmother to steal things from yard sales and secondhand shops to create the semblance of a typical suburban teenager. When her mother in China finds out, she is moved back home until she's an adult. Now, back in the States, she runs into an old friend from her youth, now a wealthy politician. Ivy then starts to deceptively work her way back into the privileged life she always wanted until someone from her past tries to upend everything. This novel is getting a lot of positive buzz from early readers who enjoy the tension and suspense that the novel creates. The next book is One by One, out on September 8th. Ruth Ware is back with another thriller, this time taking a tech startup company into a remote chalet in the French Alps for retreat. The retreat starts out like any other with PowerPoint presentations and strategy sessions broken up by mandatory bonding on the slopes. But as soon as one shareholder appends the agenda by pushing a lucrative but contentious buyout offer, tensions simmer. The storm brewing inside the chalet is no match for the one outside, however, and a devastating avalanche leaves the group cut off from all access to the outside world. Even worse, one person hasn't made it back from the slopes when the avalanche hits. As each hour passes without any sign of rescue, panic mounts and the chalet grows colder and the group begins to dwindle further. This is another solid thriller written by Ruth Ware, who's growing to be one of the most consistent and popular modern thriller writers. When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole comes out on September 15th. And this is a psychological thriller by a very prolific romance author, um, but this is actually not a romance. The publisher is calling this Get Out Meets Rear Window, which sounds incredibly creepy to me, almost too much too much creepiness for me. Um, and it does have a Publishers Weekly starred review that says this stellar and unflinching look at racism and greed will have readers hooked to the end. It's about a woman named Sydney Green whose neighborhood is being gentrified. And while she's dealing with some personal issues, she decides to take a walking tour of that neighborhood and is disappointed to find that while they talk about some of the distant uh, past and some of the white residents that lived there long, long ago, they don't really talk so much about the more recent past and a lot of the black residents that have lived there um, more recently. And so she decides to try and research her home walking tour and along with a reclusive neighbor of hers, they kind of look into um, how the neighborhood is changing and find that the disappearance and moving out of a lot of her um, longtime neighbors is actually maybe more sinister than they thought. So it looks really creepy. Um, it's really interesting to see how this will be received by um, a romance author who is well known. And uh, it's definitely worth checking out if you're interested in something a little bit more psychological. The next book is And Now She's Gone by Rachel Housel Hall out on September 22nd. This is a new novel from a rising star of the crime genre. Isabel Lincoln is gone, but is she missing? It's up to Grayson Sykes to find her, although she is reluctant to track down a woman who may not want to be found. 
Gray's search for Isabel Lincoln becomes more complicated and dangerous with every new revelation about the woman's secrets and the truth she's hidden from her friends and family. Featuring two complicated women in a dangerous cat and mouse game, and now she's gone explores the nature of secrets and how violence and fear can lead you to abandon everything in order to survive. Publishers Weekly says that the novel is full of wry, dark humor, and it's a not nuanced tale of two extraordinary women that is unputdownable. The Talented Miss Farwell by Emily Gray Tedrow comes out on September 26th, and this is a psychological thriller about a woman who is living a double life. On one hand, she is a controller and a treasurer in her small Illinois town, kind of an unassuming woman. On the other hand, she's a high stakes art collector who's known for being pretty ruthless in her art dealings. The real question is, where is she getting all this money to fund this very expensive art habit? Bookless says that this is book is both lighthearted and deeply conflicted, and I've been seeing a lot of interesting reviews about this in other sources. It looks like um, it's going to be pretty popular. The Girl in the Mirror by Rose Carlyle comes out on October 13th, and this is another psychological thriller that looks pretty interesting. This book is about mirror twins, so they're identical twins except um, some of their features are mirrored on the other. So if they have like a freckle or a mole on one side, it would be on the opposite side on the other twin. Their father dies, and he leaves his $100 million fortune to whichever of his six kids, including Iris and Summer, have his first grandchild. Um, and so this is kind of like the basis for the tension that's going to come between these twins. Um, Summer is supposedly perfect, and Iris, her sister, is jealous. And Summer is also pregnant, um, and she and Iris end up going on a yachting trip, and Summer goes missing. But So Iris decides to try and step into Summer's life um, and fools uh, her husband into thinking that she is his wife, but she finds that keeping up the ruse will be difficult. Publishers Weekly says that psychological thriller fans are in for a treat, and it's a really interesting premise um, with uh, a very old identical twin trick. The next book is Vesper Flights by Helen McDonald, out on August 25th. This is the newest book by the author of the magnificent H's for Hawk. In this new book, McDonald brings together a collection of her best essays, along with new pieces on topics ranging from nostalgia for a vanishing countryside to the tribulations of farming ostriches to her very own private vespers while trying to fall asleep. She writes on observing the massive migration of songbirds from the top of Empire State Building, watching tens of thousands of cranes in Hungary, and seeking the last golden orioles in Suffolk's poplar forests. Kirkus Review calls it an altogether memorable collection, exemplary writing for, about the intersection of the human and animal worlds. The next book is Just Us, an American Conversation by Claudia Rankine out on September 8th. Following up her brilliant book, Citizen, Rankin asks in her new collection that as everyday white supremacy becomes increasingly vocalized with no clear answers at hand, how best might we approach one another? Without telling us what to do, she urges us to begin the discussions that might open pathways through this divisive moment in American history. She mixes her poetry with essays and images to weave a series of voices answering and responding to the question of how we can meet this moment in American history. Kirkus Reviews says that it is a work that should move, challenge, and transform every reader who encounters it. 